Um, hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Kalyan, and uh, we, as a, when we are not attending conferences, we do Lean as a consulting service for our clients, and uh, we have experience doing that for a few years. Uh, we've done about uh, 15 to 20 projects across India, across a few sectors, working with large owners and contractors. Uh, and so we're sort of sharing some of our experiences, what it means to build a lean organization. It is, uh, to be fair, it's, it's exploratory in nature. It's, it's, it's not meant to be prescriptive. So wear those lenses when you listen to what we're saying. <coughs> so I guess uh, you, you've, you've, so you've kind of been in this environment for a few days now, so some of this is probably not new to you. The India's macroeconomic conditions is that construction is happening everywhere, right? Uh, and we were kind of bursting on our seams trying to build infrastructure, real estate, uh, in all uh, highways, roads, ports, metros, even uh, uh, Elon Musk's uh, hyperloops, uh, if we can get to it. Uh, so construction is kind of happening in all sectors. But at the same time, uh, there's competition coming from foreign players. So we, while, while the volume of work is growing, the pressure of competition is also kind of increasing. Uh, and this is kind of uh, felt by sort of all the principal players, on the owners at one side, but also by the EPC contractors in the middle uh, uh, who are kind of bidding and, and getting these projects. And so margins are getting squeezed uh, on, on all sides, uh, which means that there's a large sort of a realization that existing tools and processes don't necessarily work, and they need to look at new ways of doing things. Uh, so lean in India is it's still in a, somewhat of its infancy. It's probably like a toddler right now, if I, can say, if I can be so bold to say that. In the sense, we've been on this journey for a few years. I'd say 2008 is officially when we started the lean efforts in India. Uh, so so we've, uh, we've sort of dabbled with some of the tool uh, tools of implementing lean. That means last planner, as Ram said earlier, uh, we like to dabble with everything, right? So we, we, whether we, uh, so we dabbled with all the tools of lean. And but we're still figuring out what it means to and where successes lie and things like that. But the point we're making is that uh, uh, all of these uh, uh, idea of the sort of dabbling with these various things are fragmented, right? Even within a, a large organization, my IT department might be dabbling with some of the tools of Lean, like it, it could be BIM or whatever it is, whereas my, my, my site will be dabbling with uh, Last Planner or something like that and my HR will be trying to do some learning and development initiative. So not all of them necessarily talking to each other. Uh, you know, so so the, the idea of the, 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 the initiatives are also, now we have fragmented industry, fragmented ecosystem, fragmented technology, and fragmented initiatives. Welcome to India. So, uh, so the idea was there was a lack of a somewhat of a holistic approach in how to go about becoming lean, right? So our working hypothesis was that these are sort of our uh, question we were asking is, are these isolated attempts leading to suboptimal results, which in a sense is questioning the value proposition of the whole idea of lean itself? And, and is a holistic long-term strategy uh, uh, needed to sort of realize the full potential of lean? In a, in a sense, uh, we're questioning, you need to slow down before you speed up, right, in some sense. Um, and you also need to talk to your neighbors, uh, you know, within your own departments to figure out what each other is doing. <laughs> So our approach is, so we are kind of boots on the ground, so our approach is sort of case study based or experience based. Um, so, uh, we, so a lot of the uh, sort of data we're sharing or the results we're sharing is, is out of our own consulting experience of doing this. Um, so uh, it is, it, to that extent, it is kind of grounded uh, in, in, in that nature. So, so broadly, I'm gonna talk about two things that we did. So one was uh, what I call as a bottoms up approach wherein we were working with a large EPC contractor. Uh, so this is a contractor that is kind of spread out all across India. They have 10 regional offices, probably concurrently working on about 100 projects or so. And they came up to us and said, we want all our projects to be lean. We want all our projects to do last planner, right? So kind of going from zero to 16 in, 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 in three seconds or whatever it is. So we said, no, it's not possible. So uh, one of the things we said instead what we can try is we picked all projects in a region that are somewhat co-located, at least in a city. We picked Bangalore as the region. And uh, we, uh, and, and, and a lot of our experience of doing lean has been site. So we end up putting one of our guys on the site, teaching people how to do a last planner system, what it means to identify constraints, what it means to do a weekly work plan, what does it mean to do a, a sunset meeting, and, and all of those things, right? So we said, uh, and and, and uh, so the, 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 the thesis of the whole, uh, the, 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 the thesis, the way it was built is we said, we'll put one of our guys in your sites for about three months, 
So which means we have three months to educate your site on how to follow the last planner system and also do some value stream mapping because value stream mapping was done more to identify the intervention strategies for your uh, delay reasons which come out of the PPCs. So those are the two tools and those are the only two tools we will teach you. So we had about three months to teach you those tools and the success of the approach was after we've left the building, are you still following the tool, right? So you will obviously listen to the teacher when the uh, when classroom is on, but when you've left the room, what are you doing is the question we were asking, right? So uh, we did that for about 18 months in about six of their sites. So every site just we just go teach you last planner, allow you to uh, absorb and digest last planner for about a month or so. Then we'll come back and teach you value stream mapping, and then we'll kind of let you absorb value stream mapping. Make sure you kind of course correct in, in any of your understanding in last planner, and then we kind of walk away, right? So the, 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 what we were also looking to learn, because every organization is different, we were looking to see what is sticky about the, every organization has its own DNA, has its own culture. We wanted to find out what will help us cause that repeatability so that they could scale it to that 100 organization that they really wanted to do. Um, so I'll come back to the results of it in the end. Uh, but broadly, uh, what we found was that at least in the, and this is, a, this is a primarily a civil contractor, so they do a lot of these core and shell concrete buildings. And we found that by last planner, which effectively helped with better coordination, uh, you're able to reduce cycle time. My floor to floor cycle time, my concrete pour cycle times were coming down. And uh, uh, in, at, at various pockets, like at my carpenter trades or my barbender trades or something like that, I could get pockets of improvement in productivity by being somewhat more focused and you know, wearing a, looking at it with a big lens and things like that, right? So, and the other thing that we did is all of these uh, uh, sites had to do a monthly, what they call as a project review meeting. So which means they have to present to senior management what they achieved or did not achieve during the month and you know, make excuses for why they did not achieve their plans, give better plans for the next month and repeat that cycle, right? So one of the things we said is the management had to change the language or sort of the questions they were looking to ask their project teams. And we said, therefore, the management had to ask their team not profitability metrics, while they should, but the first thing they should ask them are production metrics. So the first three slides in their project review meetings, we said had to be, what is your cycle time? What is your production? What is your PPC? And more importantly, what interventions are you doing to avoid those PPC, like my Sri Lankan friend just said, right? So, uh, the, uh, I, and I think the success came out of the fact that at least three out of the five sites continued to use Last Planner even after we had left the building, right? But so, so, so now remember this, so keep this in mind, I'm sort of doing this at the ground level. So these are sort of entry level execution engineers, planning engineers with one or two years of experience to whom we are teaching these tools. So for them necessarily, it is somewhat prescriptive. We're kind of telling you, giving you a formula and saying, when Saturday afternoons, two o'clock, you're doing a weekly planning meeting. Seven o'clock in the evening, at the end of the shift, you're coming and doing your daily huddle. Right? Six weeks ahead, we want you to look at the drawings for the next four while you're looking at the previous four. You know, things like that. It tends to be somewhat prescriptive in nature, but it's also targeted at an audience that is sort of just coming out into the industry. Right? Um, the one, one sort of nice uh, uh, side benefit that came out of it is that one of the planning engineers that was f with us uh, sort of took to this whole idea of lean last planner a little more and he was in turn morphed into an, an internal lean champion within the organization. And then after these six sites that we did, he was made responsible to roll it out into their other things. So we sort of built capacity in the organization that way as well, right? So that, uh, so I have some photographs where we are doing uh, stand-up meetings. We're sort of measuring these uh, PPCs of four cycles and things like that, sorry? Uh, 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 and so, uh, getting all the trade uh, foremen to kind of participate in weekly meetings, looking at data and all of that stuff. <laughs> so that was, uh, uh, I guess, looking at PPC. I'm just, this is just uh, indicative results of one of the sites uh, uh, of uh, how we set up uh, uh, measurement mechanisms so that they can understand how they're doing on, uh, on, on, on lean. So, this, the, the, uh, so, so to, to summarize, there's a large contractor and we're trying to say that at the bottom most level, we're giving you prescriptive mechanisms to build capacity for sort of the entry level, sort of initially uh, experienced stuff. Whereas in order to drive these lean initiatives, as, uh, as we all know, it doesn't happen unless you have management programs that drive these initiatives, right? So we also about, oops, 
uh, uh, worked with another uh, sort of real estate company. This is an owner who, who has aspirations to go to the next level and become a large developer. So they uh, had a, uh, their HR department uh, put together a learning and development program, which they call their next generation leadership program. So it's called an NGL program. So the heads of the various departments, sales, procurement, new product development, custom uh, liaisoning, also their product man uh, the project managers from each of their large projects, where about 28 people came together in a room. And uh, the idea was to create a lean awareness for those 28 people, but this is over a longer program. This is over a one year program that we did that, right? And so it, uh, by necess necessarily they're being heads of departments, they're not necessarily gonna practice these tools, but we needed to, them to drive those initiatives, which means they needed, we needed them to believe in them, right? So what we did is one of the first things we did is we put, we grouped them into four sort of cross-functional teams. Um, and, and the idea was to bring in a, a combination of theory and practice uh, so that they, uh, for that one year, they were both practitioners, but hopefully for the rest of their careers, they will be uh, change agents in some sense, right? So the idea was to operationalize initiatives in a rolling cycle. So the, there were four uh, cross-functional teams. One was, uh, one was themed quality, one was themed cost optimization, one was around new product development, and the fourth one was customer satisfaction. So uh, in the goal was in each quarter we would introduce a new tool. Each of the teams at the end of that introduction had about uh, an hour to discuss internally and come out with a proposal on what they would do to practice one of those tools over a quarter. And then one of us would go and have weekly discussions with them, answer questions, help them with data collection, help them with data analysis and the thing. And the key was for this one year, they had to collect the data themselves so in a sense they had to do the gemba. You couldn't go have a GET or someone say, go collect the productivity of the carpenter and come. You had to go paint or collect the carpenter's data yourself, even though you're a head of a department, right? So the first quarter was the focus was value stream mapping. The second quarter, the focus was last planner or LPS. The third quarter was more around an introduction to technology as we speak broadly, uh, building information modeling more about the, rather than the information focus rather than the 3D part of it. And the fourth quarter was around uh, other tools like Kanban, 5S, Pokayoke, uh, et cetera, right? So uh, this is kind of uh, the thing we did. Sorry. Um, uh, so the, 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 but the benefits that came out of this, uh, and so this is, uh, so, th so, uh, so you, can you imagine the head of sales going in front of a site and measuring productivity of a farm work uh, uh, for a carpenter or the project manager sitting in the head office and looking at why is my bill process, what are the steps for processing an, an invoice and figuring out why is it taking um, uh, five weeks to get my bills invoice kind of thing. So we were looking to get two or three learning outcomes out of this, right? So one was we were hoping each of these heads of departments would appreciate their brethren's pain points so that when they kind of called out and say, why is my invoice not getting processed? He said, well, you did the VSM, so you know what the steps are, right? So the, the other thing is that because they are an NGL, and they're kind of working together in a classroom environment for a year, they're also building some camaraderie and some, I don't know, brother, brotherhood relationship between them, which will help the organization itself go up to the next level. But the third important outcome that we said is they would now understand and appreciate, even if we had exposed them to 10 tools, and let's say two tools were something that they took to, they would now be more convinced to push those two tools through their organization, right? So now I have buy-in at the top, uh, which to, for, for people who will drive these change, and I have education at the bottom, which will uh, sort of learn those things, right? So that is kind of what we're saying, uh, our proposal uh, for, a, for, a, for a sort of an overall holistic organizational transformation. So we're saying at the bottom level, necessarily you have to have some prescriptive mechanisms of teaching people some of these tools, but at the top down level, you have to build that culture, awareness, and, and conviction for people to drive down these change initiatives. And unless you kind of do both in somewhat of a tandem mechanism, you are going to be dabbling with these tools without necessarily getting a holistic benefit out of it, right? So that's what of sort of what I've summarized here, saying uh, in the bottom up approach, these are people who are uh, uh, sort of rank and file workforce who are just coming out. It's okay to be prescriptive, it's okay to give them a formula, it's okay to give them, in fact, uh, somebody here, I think Ram gave me this. They gave me a booklet saying, here is how uh, in, 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 in Vedicate, they are actually teaching people how to do lean, right? 
So I don't even mind giving a volume like this to all our, all our site engineers and planning engineers saying, this is what I want you to do on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday kind of a thing, right? But, but the sustenance comes because, uh, sorry, the sustenance comes because the top management is convinced about it. So that's kind of our uh, 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 diagrammatic representation of the whole thing. And that's our conclusion. So, so we think you need both. Thank you. Thank you.